Morning Observer Live. Uh, Mike Sempervivi is not here right now. Yes, Mike? Say something. And now your mic's not working. I'll uh, attempt to uh, fix this probably during the next break. What a way to begin the day here today. Anyway, we uh, talked before the first break about the passing of Daphne Unger, Shannon Spruill. And uh, as noted in, I believe, uh, 20, 2009, somewhere around there, she went to World Championship Wrestling. And uh, it was one disaster after another, including a very famous match. It was a, it was a dark match, I believe, with uh, a wrestler known as Rosie Lotta Love, who was large. And I don't even know everything that happened in that match, but I mean, Daphne just was physically destroyed. I believe there was a uh, like a crushed sternum and a neck injury and a concussion. And I believe she was back in the ring a month later. And I don't know how many concussions she got working for TNA, but she did uh, file a lawsuit uh, to cover her medical bills for injuries she suffered during her time with the company, including multiple concussions. And uh, sometimes you see these these uh, lawsuits. Uh, there have been several against WWE, like the concussion lawsuits. And, you know, these are lawsuits that are filed years later. And oftentimes individuals involved. I'm not saying everybody, okay? But if you look through the list of names, it's like, you know, this person was in professional wrestling for 35 years and they had six months in WWE, and they're part of this lawsuit. And it's like, I mean, come on. I don't doubt at all that you had some sort of, of you, may, you may have very serious CTE, but to blame WWE for that when you had six months of your career in the company and you had 30 years all over the world everywhere, I mean, that's, it's difficult to, to, and that there's a reason many of these lawsuits have been thrown out, although a lot of them were thrown out for the wrong reason, which is, uh, I forget the term, but you you have to file the lawsuit within X number of years from when you suffered the injury. But with, with CTE, I mean, you could have suffered multiple concussions in ECW in the 90s, and that doesn't manifest until, you know, years and years and years later. But then you're not allowed to sue anyway. It's a very complicated situation, but in the case of Daphne, I mean, even when the another thing about those WWE lawsuits is sometimes people there's a class action lawsuit and they want to be involved, but they can't necessarily point to any one instance where horrible things happen to them in WWE. If you're a Kurt Angle, for example, or a Mick Foley, I mean, you can point to Mick Foley got thrown off the top of a cage. He was clearly, his tooth is gone. Uh, then he goes back in, he gets chokeslammed through the top of the cage. The match keeps going. Or or when Kurt Angle took, um, I think when him and Triple H were doing the, the pedigree, the table broke early, uh, Kurt Angle is knocked unconscious, but then they still get back in the ring and go 20 more minutes. When you can point to a specific example, that's one thing. When you can't point to a specific example and you were just in the company for whatever, I mean, that's different. With Daphne, you can absolutely, positively, specifically point to examples during her TNA run where she suffered serious injuries, and then she ended up either continuing to wrestle, getting back into the ring quickly. So I don't know what exactly came of the uh, the lawsuit. I think it was settled out of court, which tells me if it's settled out of court, she probably received compensation for it. But anyway, in the video that she put up, I mean, she specifically stated she wanted her brain sent to Boston. So she clearly believed that her mental health issues were the result of multiple concussions and perhaps CTE and whatever else. And and it's a horrible story. And uh, Mick Foley here wrote, A terrible loss for her family, friends, and wrestling. She was far ahead of her time in our business. If you're hurting and thinking of doing harm to yourself, please know that help is available. The number for the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, 1-800-273-8255. 
And we had, I mean, there were many, many, there's people in the chat, there was people on our board, there's people on Twitter that, that have talked about how they felt this way in their lives, and they are suggesting, obviously, if you're, if you're feeling like this, call the helpline, call friends, get some help. Uh, do not consider yourself to be a burden. Uh, get some help, and and that's the that's story of many of these stories, unfortunately. And the, the highlight, I think, of Daphne's career, and uh, and it is a highlight because this was during the 2000 WCW era. And if you watch 2000 WCW, it was bad. Uh, 1999 WCW. It was bad. 1998, WCW was getting bad. But 99 and 2000 were the peak of this was horrible. Just a terribly booked, horrible promotion. And if you could be a standout during that period, if you could have been one of the highlights of WCW during that period, then you were, to me, a big success. And the Daphne... Crowbar, David Flair pairing. Whatever you want to say about David Flair as a wrestler, I mean, that's fair because he was a very bad wrestler. But the fact of the matter is, how could he have been a good wrestler? Like, he was there because he was Ric Flair's son, and they threw him out there. He had very, very little experience. He had to learn on national television. There were many bad matches, but there were also there were also glimmers of the fact that he was a flair. And as a performer in the ring, uh, not exactly not exactly the best, but as a performer who could do the crazy David Flair role, uh, which was a takeoff from his his father, the, the segments that were done with Crowbar and David Flair and Daphne, they were a lot of fun. And if you go back and watch them, they were they were one of the few things in WCW at the time that you could actually look at and say, you know, this is this is not bad. And they had a lot of fun doing it, and they entertained fans. And I would say that this was uh, the peak of, of, well, I mean, all of their careers, because David Flair, I mean, as soon as WCW ended, I mean, it was only a few years later that he was completely out of the business. And Daphne came back, and, you know, she did some fun things in other promotions, but... I mean, the most notable national promotion that she worked in after World Championship Wrestling was TNA. And unfortunately there, I mean, it was just one disaster after another. So all of this stuff is up on the on the uh, WWE Network or Peacock or whatever it is now. You can go up there and you can look at some of the fun things that they did in World Championship Wrestling. And it was, it was a highlight of a very, very bad time in World Championship Wrestling.